So when you smell a really heavy jasmine fragrance, do you think to yourself, ooh, that smells like bad breath, unwashed bodies and BO? Or do you think to yourself, hmm, that's kind of a little bit dirty. I quite like that. What is that? Oh, let me sniff that again. Mm, it sort of smells a bit like close, damp, warm skin after something naughty. And it's, it's really quite sexy. Either way, you've been indulged. And in this video, we're going to find out what indoles are, where they come from, and how they're used in perfumery, and what it is about them that makes us either love or hate them. And also, I'll give you some good examples of where you can go and sniff indolic fragrances. So if you've not seen me before, I'm Claire Smith and I make videos all about perfume and perfume science. So if that kind of thing interests you, then please consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please like this video if you do like this video. So if you haven't already checked out my perfume science playlist, then I'll link it up above in the cards and I'll also put it in the description box below. And there you will find videos all about petrichor in fragrances, musk perfumes, solar notes in perfumery and watery notes in perfumery. And also some analysis of the psychology selling you fragrance when you're in store or online. So if those interest you, then please do go check them out. So what are indoles? Well, simply put, indoles are just a group of chemicals and they are all based on this two ring structure. Synthetic indole was first made from indigo and from oleum. So you can see where the name indole has come from. So actually with the name indole, really you have no idea how that's going to smell, do you? You, you really need to know the names of some specific indole compounds to be able to have a guess at how it's going to smell. So let me give you some examples. So the first example is cadaverine. So that one is supposed to smell of cadavers, so like a rotting dead body. There's also an indole called putrescine, which is supposed to smell like the stench of rotting vegetables. Then there's very famously the indole scatol. So the name scatol actually derives from the Greek scato, which actually translates as shit. So I wonder how that one smells. And then there's my personal lab favourite, the one I absolutely dread using when I'm doing any kind of experiment because I can smell it for days. And that is butyric acid. So butyric acid, the name derives from the Greek word for butter, which is butyro. And that one actually smells like rancid butter. But to me, it really reminds me of the smell of sick. So you may have come across butyric acid in the context of chocolate, actually, because American or US chocolate has a higher content of butyric acid in it compared with European chocolate. And that's what gives it its sort of very odd taste. So like them or not, indoles are just something we give off naturally. So the bad breath smell, part of the feces smell, also the sweaty smell, and the sick smell are all indolic smells. So you get the picture, indoles are something that don't always smell clean and sometimes they can actually smell pretty repulsive. So why can they smell so good in fragrances but so bad in so many other situations? Well, like many things in life, it's all to do with context. So it's all about the other chemicals that are present with the indoles and it's also about the concentration of the indoles. So using indoles can really make a chemically made, quite flat floral fragrance just come alive. It feels like you can smell the pollen, you can smell the texture of the petals. It just has a more luscious, more heady feel to it. But in higher concentrations, indoles actually begin to smell unpleasant. Undiluted, pure indole can smell like mothballs, perhaps even a bit like a wet dog like bad breath, just like something that's a little bit off, but you can't really put your finger on exactly how it smells. Something in some kind of state of decay. It's only when indoles are actually diluted to concentrations below 1% that they start to become pleasant. They start to smell a little bit floral. And that is the secret. That's how you make an indole smell nice. It's about the concentration and the context. So what is it about indoles? that makes us and other animals like them. Well, indoles are actually made by plants, animals, and also bacteria. So it's really interesting from a biological point of view that they're actually made across three different kingdoms of life. That suggests that they're evolutionary, very old, and therefore they probably have some important functions. But what are those functions? 
In the animal world, indoles provide clues to other animals about how that animal lives. It might suggest, for example, what that animal's diet is. And importantly, indoles are a signal to other animals about that animal's tryptophan intake. So tryptophan is an essential amino acid, which we and many other animals obtain through our diets. So why are indoles indicative of tryptophan? It's because indoles are the breakdown product of tryptophan metabolism. So if animals smelt of indoles, they must have had some kind of exposure to tryptophan, which is an important resource. So we get tryptophan in our diet from things like milk, tuna, cheese and oats. And tryptophan is incredibly important because it's the building block of serotonin. And serotonin is that feel-good neurotransmitter. So serotonin is associated with lots of different functions in your body, but it's most associated with moderating your mood. And that's why it's really, really important for us to have a source of tryptophan. And actually, many antidepressants are based on their modulation of the serotonin pathway. In insects, indoles are pheromones, so they're kind of the sexy chemical of the insect world. And they are incredibly important to beetles such as scarab beetles. They are also used by flies, for example, by blowflies for indicating where to lay eggs or not to lay eggs in other fly species. Interestingly, in plants, indoles are plant hormones, so they can influence plant growth. And plants also use indoles to attract insects because insects think they're onto a good thing and they're going to get some sexy time. But ultimately, the plant just wants them there to pollinate its flowers. So which flowers produce the highest amounts of indoles? Well, if someone said to you, indolic, what would be the flower that you would name after someone said that? I think the thing that's probably on the tip of your tongue is jasmine. And why is that? It's because jasmine actually has a really high concentration of indoles within it. And actually the highest concentration of indoles within jasmine is found within the jasmine grown in grass in France. So if you have smelt indolic fragrance in nature, then you've probably smelt it from smelling a jasmine flower because jasmine flowers just have such a high concentration of indoles in them. But fun fact, jasmine also shares some fragrance molecules in common with horse sweat. And so it's that and not always indole that can give it a bit of an alamalic touch to it. It's not just jasmine that has really quite high concentrations of indoles though. Other white florals do as well. So things like orange blossom, tuberose, gardenia and lily. But it's not just white florals that do have indoles. Other florals do as well and in varying concentrations. So things that are a little bit heavier on indoles might be things like hyacinth, uh, wisteria, ylang-ylang, lilac, but even things like rose have some level of indole in them and even some citrus fruits do. So why aren't all floral perfumes or at least all white floral perfumes a little bit indolic? If all these white florals have indoles in them, why are some perfumes just not indolic? Surely they all should be. Well, it's because modern perfumes are generally not made from natural essential oils. They are usually made from synthetically made chemicals which mimic or copy certain aspects of those essential oils, certain, certain molecules within those essential oils. And it's up to the perfumer to try to create an accord to try to mimic that natural essential oil. And the perfumer can do that however they want. They could maybe choose maybe the greener aspects of jasmine, the, the sort of the lusher, the fresher aspects of jasmine if they wanted to create a lighter jasmine fragrance. So they might use something like Hedione to do that. But they might also want that indolic touch. So they would have to actually choose to put an indolic molecule back into that fragrance to make that jasmine fragrance indolic. If perfumers are actually using natural oils, I don't know whether they would want to, but it is possible for them to remove aspects of indoles within those natural oils. So they can use something called fractionation, but that would be a very, very expensive way of using an essential oil, really. Um, I, don't, I don't think most perfumers would choose to do that. I think they would probably go down the, the chemical route rather than removing indoles in that way. 
because if you look at the price difference between naturals and and chemical jasmine notes it, it's in the, the sort of the thousands to ten thousands per kilo kind of price range so i just don't see why a perfumer would do that so why are perfumers sometimes choosing not to add back in indoles or to remove them from natural essential oils well it's because consumers don't always want an indolic fragrance indolic fragrances are just sometimes just not appropriate i mean thinking about the things that indoles remind us of and things that indoles are associated with so bodily functions and also sort of sex really does everybody want to be thinking of bodily functions and sex when they're for example in a in a customer facing situation or they are working very close to someone who perhaps doesn't like fragrance i think there's just a modern aversion to to smelling dirty basically isn't there you you don't want to smell dirty you want to smell clean you want to smell like you've just stepped out of a shower you don't want to be smelling like you've just had some dirty hot action somewhere in a cupboard because you know that's what indoles can remind people of and that's why perfumers are perhaps hesitant to make a really heavy indolic fragrance especially in the in the mass market area of perfumery which is the, the designer market Another problem with indoles in fragrance is that they can trigger headaches in certain people. So I, for example, get, get headaches with certain white florals. And I don't know whether that's indoles or whether that's another fragrance molecule within those perfumes. But certainly certain fragrances can trigger headaches for me. So from a perfumer's point of view, it may be just more crowd pleasing to have a fragrance without indoles. I think either way, it's important to remember that if a fragrance is indolic, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a natural fragrance oil. It doesn't mean that it's a more expensive fragrance. It just means that the perfumer has chosen to perhaps add indole back into the composition. It's not necessarily an indication of quality or cost. So what is it that makes indoles just so attractive or repulsive to us? Well, to a certain extent, whether you love indolic fragrances or not, is going to be partly down to your life experience and also down to your culture. So for example, if you live somewhere like the Philippines where your national flower is jasmine and you go in churches and smell jasmine all the time because it's used in churches there, then you're probably going to really love the smell of jasmine and you're probably going to really like that indolic floral fragrance. Whereas if you rarely come across jasmine in, in real life or other indolic florals, you might be surprised by it. You may never have sniffed indolic florals in perfumery before. They might come as a shock because they're not really something you see much on the designer perfume market. So in a way, whether you like them or not, might be an acquired taste. It might be something you have to learn to appreciate. It might be like when you eat foods like olives and oysters. Most people don't like those foods from the offset. They are things that you have to learn to appreciate. And it's the same perhaps with indolic florals. Also, there's simply the way your sense of smell is wired. So we all have different combinations of olfactory receptors, different amounts of olfactory receptors and different types of olfactory receptors. And that's just simply because there's just huge genetic diversity in, in that part of our genome. And that is why we all perceive fragrances very differently to each other and like different things. But ultimately, there does seem to be some kind of inbuilt urge in humans towards smelling indoles. We, whether we hate it or love it, we seem to just not be able to stop smelling them. They seem addictive to us whether we like them or not. So what do indoles do to us? So of course things that I've already discussed in other videos such as musk, but also other kind of animalic fragrance notes that are now made synthetically such as castoreum, civet and ambergris are things that just give us some kind of primal signal. They make us think of bodily excretions, they make us think of sweat, and they make us think of just raw primal sex as well. So why specifically are indoles sexy? Well, it's because indoles are actually a sign of arousal in humans and many other animals as well. So actually studies have been done on men's breath and when they are sexually aroused, they actually breathe out higher levels of indoles and that's because of increased metabolism of tryptophan due to serotonin production and breakdown that may act as some kind of cue to females to for females to be able to detect when a male is aroused similarly for females 
in goals are actually produced down there. And that may also be an unconscious signal to males that we are aroused. So ultimately for both sexes, the smell of indoles may be just intimately associated with a true sign of attraction to other people. And that may be why we just like them so much because they just excite us. So why do we always want more of indoles even when we're not sure they smell pleasant? Well, if you think about when something smells just a little bit dirty, not very dirty, just a little bit dirty, what happens? Do you shy away and not want to smell that again? Or does it get you interested? Does it make you want to sniff it again to see whether it was dirty or whether it wasn't? Was one whiff of those slightly smelly shoes enough? Or do you do you go back for more? It's really a case of like other animals, basically. It's like when dogs, you know, sniff out other dogs doings. It's a way of us and other animals finding out information about other animals. It's a way of us being able to communicate through the smells that we've left. In actual fact, you know, even when we get close and personal in other ways, so for example, kissing is seen as a way of us being able to smell each other. And indoles are another example of that. They're just something that we smell and we get information from based on those smells, even though that information is unconsciously gained. So if you're not sure whether you like the smell of indolic florals, what should you consider? Well, firstly, I'd say the smell of indolic florals is really not for everybody, and that is okay. We all perceive fragrances differently. It doesn't mean that you're not cultured and you aren't liking certain fragrances because you don't know enough about fragrance or whatever other kind of rubbish somebody might tell you. It just means you're a different person to somebody else and that's okay in life. You know, you can be who you want to be. If you're a person who wants to smell freshly washed and shampooed and clean, then I'd say indolic florals were probably not for you. If, on the other hand, you just can't get enough of that slightly dirty animalic touch and you want to sort of smell like you've just had some steamy saucy event in your life, then indolic florals may well be very much for you. I think there are clearly very different levels of indoles in perfumery and there are certainly some more beginner kind of indolic fragrances compared to the the ultimately strong ones that will really be on a challenging level for someone who's intolerant of indolics. Another important thing to think about when you're thinking about which fragrances might be indolic and which ones might not be is that indoles are not only added to floral fragrances so They might also be added to more spicy and ambery fragrances and that's because indoles can add a kind of lightness to those fragrances, can provide sort of a little bit of a lift to those fragrances to make them a little bit less heavy. I think for me indolics are something that I'm only just learning to appreciate. It's something that in sign of fragrances is not really that present and I think when you do smell them, they strike you as something a little bit odd, a little bit out of the ordinary, and also something perhaps even a little bit old fashioned, because you probably will have only experienced them in vintage fragrances. And I think that's probably why perfumers these days shy away from them a little bit, because they're just a bit out of fashion. But ultimately, they do add a lot of interest to fragrances, and they do think make things more lifelike, and that is their beauty. So I think really trying some indolic fragrances is probably good for for most people in perfumery. I'm not saying that everybody should like them, but I think that everybody should try them because you never know, do you? I think this is the case with most different things in perfumery. You should try everything because you'd never know what you're going to love and some things really surprise you. So if you want to experience indoles in fragrance, which fragrances should you go sniff? Well, I'm going to start off with some beginner ones and then we'll go to the, the more serious end of the market. So for the beginner, I'm going to choose one from my own collection, which is Gucci Bloom Nataro de Fiore. So this is a flanker fragrance to the original Gucci Bloom. And this is a white floral fragrance. So it's based around honeysuckle, tuberose and jasmine. And to me, it's definitely got a a, like a teetering on the edge of indolic to me. It's one of those that just keeps you sniffing. It's one of those that you have to keep returning to to check what you just smelt. And I think that's really where indolic is leading, isn't it? It's that thing that keeps bringing you back to the edge. And this one for me is something that, it sounds weird, but it smells a little bit like dolce latte cheese to me in the beginning. And it also reminds me a little bit of bad breath to begin with. 
So I think that is some kind of indole, but I think really overall this is indole light. This is something that most people will be able to tolerate. A more controversial one is one that's really debated in perfumery as to whether it's, whether it's indolic or not. Uh, some people say this is the ultimate in clean jasmine. Other people say that it isn't and that it's got animalic touches to it. But ultimately, as we've seen, that doesn't have to be the jasmine that's given it the animalic touch. There are clearly musks here and those could be contributing to that feel to it. But it's one I'm going to highlight anyway, and that is Alien by Moogler. So this fragrance really, I think, in the original formulation is probably slightly more indolic feeling than the newer formulation. But I can see why people say that this is a slightly indolic fragrance. But ultimately, the jasmine note in this fragrance is, is otherworldly. It's something that isn't a natural kind of jasmine. So it's something where the indole would have had to have been added back in, I think. So Alien by Moogla is also one to check out to see whether you think that it is slightly indolic or it isn't. It's debated. Moving on to some stronger indolic fragrances now, and I think probably the one that most people highlight as being indolic is one by Serge Luton, and that is A La Nuit. So A La Nuit, I haven't actually tried, but I've heard that it's a very strong jasmine fragrance, and it actually has three different types of jasmine in it, so it probably really packs a punch. And it also has honey in it, which I imagine would really amp up the indolic feel because it, honey is slightly animalic and it also has a warm musky base again probably a little bit an animalic so that might be one to check out as well if you can Alain Nuit by Serge Luton so keeping on the niche side of perfumery one that I have heard about from the fragmentation Gabby is Salome so Salome is from Papillon Artisan Perfumes and they have made this jasmine based fragrance but it has a very strong cumin note in it as well so cumin can sometimes smell a little bit sweaty almost um, a little bit like unwashed bodies and that probably really amps up the feeling of the jasmine in this fragrance salome also has a number of animalic notes in it so i think together they could really enhance the indolic feeling from the fragrance as well so i think ultimately if you want to really experience a really strong punch from your indolic fragrance Looking for a fragrance that also has animalic notes in it, such as civet, castoreum, uh, ambergris and musk, is probably going, going to give you a better, stronger hit from the indolics. And actually on the flip side, just might be the thing that tips it over the edge for many other people. So another one to check out might be one from Diptyque because Diptyque is very easily found in department stores and they're easy to try without any kind of cost to you. So Olene by Diptyque would be one to, to go and try. So this is a mainly jasmine fragrance but it does have wisteria and daffodil as well as supporting notes and also some honeysuckle. And this fragrance is actually a, an eau de toilette formulation. Normally Diptyque have both eau de toilette and also eau de parfum concentrations. But I think they only make the eau de toilette in this particular fragrance, probably because it is so strong already. So yeah, that one has a definite indolic touch to it and it's one to go and try out. And finally, another one you can probably try on your local high street would be something like Lush Lush. So this is a, a jasmine and a lang lang based fragrance. And to me, the opening can smell a little bit like wee because it does have so much a lang lang in it. But I know that a lot of people love that, that fragrance. It's just a bit too much for me. It's something that is just a bit too in your face from when I tried it. It's just too strong for me. But I know that a lot of people love it. And I know it has been reformulated and people are saying, you know, it's not quite as good as it used to be. But it still might be one to go and check out to see whether you like that kind of indolic touch. Another way you could go to try to find an indolic floral fragrance would be to go with something that's vintage. And there are probably many vintage fragrances out there that do have indolic touches to them. But the really famous one is probably Joy by Jean Patou. And this fragrance is something that is really quite hard to find nowadays. I've, I've never actually seen it in a store. I have seen it online. But this fragrance was actually created in the 30s, so it is pretty old now. So Joy has primarily jasmine and rose, but it is also supported by tuberose and elang elang. And I think it's really that mixture of florals that, that really gives it that indolic touch. So that one or something else vintage might be something else to check out as well. 
So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy the video, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know, do you like Indolix in floral fragrances or do you shy away from them? Is it something that if you do love them, you've had to learn to love or did you always love them in perfumery? And also please let me know if you know of any designer or niche fragrances with strong Indolix notes that I should check out. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.